King Egbert of Wessex Before Alfred the Great's reign, Egbert of Wessex was the most powerful and important king of Wessex. Egbert ascended to the throne at a time when the neighboring kingdom of Mercia dominated Wessex and had a sealed marital union with the sitting king Beortric. Egbert appears to have taken his time assembling his army and resources before confronting the mercenary troops in the Battle of Elendun in 825 CE and defeating them. He quickly conquered Mercian lands, appointed his son Ethelwulf as vice-king, and quelled Mercian aggression. Egbert was the first Wessex king to entirely conquer Mercia, and the stability he brought to the kingdom allowed for future development as well as the creation of resources to withstand Viking raids. He was so strong at the time of his death that the Anglo-Saxon chronicles call him the ruler of Britain, not only the king of Wessex. Egbert was likely born in Kent, the son of Eilmund, the kingdom's short-lived ruler. The Anglo-Saxon chronicles confirm his Kentish ancestry, although new study claims he was born in Wessex. Nothing is known of his youth, save that he may have been related to Eilmund and that he claimed to be descended from Cerdic, the founder and first king of Wessex. Later genealogies, however, which were produced by Wessex scribes after Egbert had already established himself as a strong ruler and so may not be credible, make this assertion. It was standard practice for king's scribes to ascribe to their liege excellent pedigrees even if they could not be verified, and linking Egbert to Cerdic would have elevated his prestige. Even yet, it's plausible that Egbert is a descendant of Cerdic, and a West Saxon nobleman with ties to the Kingdom of Kent would not have been out of the ordinary. However, it is extremely definite that Egbert came from Kent and was a descendant of King Egbert of Kent, or 664-673 CE, or, more likely, Egbert II, or 0.765 C.779 CE, Eilmund's father. If he was of Kentish ancestry, he would have grown up during the Mercian reign of terror over the country. During his reign, King Cuthred of Wessex, or 740-756 CE, conquered Mercia and elevated Wessex, and therefore Kent, but his gains were reversed under his successor Sigebert, or 756-757 CE, and Kinewulf, or 756-757 CE. 757 to 786 CE. Mercia was the dominating power by the time Egbert was born in c. 770 CE, and it ruled Kent through client kings, as they had, on and off, from as early as 664 CE. Kent defeated Mercia in battle c. 776 CE under the reign of Egbert II and maintained its independence through the reign of Eilmund, but King Offa of Mercia, or 757-796 CE, reasserted his power in 785 CE and again took control of the kingdom. In 786 CE, Kinewulf of Wessex died and the nobleman Beortric, or 786-802 CE, was in line to assume the throne but was challenged by Egbert, who seemingly comes out of nowhere to assert his right to rule Wessex, thus arguing for Wessex nobility as his origin. Beortric was supported by Offa, however, who sealed a contract with Wessex by marrying his daughter Edbert to Beortric. Egbert was driven into exile and fled to Francia. Francia was a unified state at the time, and the young exile was protected by Charlemagne, king of the Franks 768-814 CE, Holy Roman Emperor 800-814 CE. Alpha's son Ecfrith, R. 796 CE, was married to one of Charlemagne's daughters, Bertha, and it is stated that Charlemagne was angry when Alpha offered an alliance that would be confirmed by the marriage of Alpha's son Ecfrith, R. 796 CE to one of Charlemagne's daughters, Bertha. 
Despite this, Charlemagne did nothing to thwart Offa's ambitions in Wessex at the time, presumably because Beortric had a valid claim to the throne that trumped Egbert's. Offa died in 796 CE, and his successor, Ecfrith, died not long after. Senwulf of Mercia, R. 798-821 CE, ascended to the throne, perhaps after assassinating Ecfrith, and carried on Offa's policy toward Wessex and its monarch. He maintained Mercian dominance in the region, and Wessex acted as a puppet state for him. When Beortric died in 802 CE, Egbert stayed in exile in Francia, but Charlemagne appears to have backed Egbert's desire for power, and he became king of Wessex. The first twenty years of Egbert's rule are mostly unknown. He appears to have reasserted Wessex's independence from Mercia, although no records of how he did it or of military battles between the two kingdoms exist. Instead, in around 815 CE, Egbert marched his forces west to capture Demnonia, modern Cornwall, which was on his border. Demnonia's wealthy ports and trade ties, expertise in metallurgy, and other resources Egbert would need to raise and equip an army undoubtedly encouraged these missions. Mercia had ruled over Wessex since 785 CE, and there are no traces of military activity under Beortric's reign. Although there are no records of any military build-up in Wessex during Egbert's early reign, this must have been where he focused his energies because he was able to effectively campaign in Demnonia between c. 815-820 CE and conduct an effective offensive against Mercia itself in 825 CE. Senwulf of Mercia died in 821 CE, and was replaced by his brother Seolwulf I, or 821-823 CE, who was overthrown by the nobleman Bjornwulf, or 823-826 CE, as Egbert was collecting his troops for the Battle of Elendun, which would end Mercian dominance. The year 825 CE is recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles as follows. The Battle of Elendun was lost or never documented, and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles are known for their brief and tantalizing comments, thus there is no description of how Egbert organized or commanded his force. The campaign was effective regardless of how he carried it out. Mercia would eventually assert itself and recover part of its territory and independence, but it would never be the power it once was before Elendun. Following Elendun's victory, the chronicles record a succession of triumphs, stating in 827 CE, Egbert, in the same year, conquered the Mercian kingdom and all that is south of the Humber, being the ninth monarch who was ruler of all the British dominions. Although the Anglo-Saxon chronicles cite 827 CE as the year of Wessex's total dominance, archaeological and literary evidence has cast doubt on this date. Mercia had lost land, power, and reputation, but its rulers continued to govern. Bjornwolf survived the combat of Elendun but was slain battling the East Angles in 826 CE, and was replaced by Ladika. Are 826 to 827 CE, who died in battle the following year while attempting to finish Bjornwolf's campaign to quell East Anglia's uprising. The throne was later taken by Wiglaf, are 827 to 829, 830 to 839 CE, who tried his hardest to maintain Mercian autonomy from Wessex. The passage in the Chronicles for 825 CE saying that Egbert dispatched Ethelwulf to Kent to overthrow Baldred is thought to be wrong by a few months or a year, and the deposing of Baldred most likely occurred in 826 CE. Baldred was Bjornwulf's client king of Kent, and his death would have been devastating to Mercia. Egbert claimed kingship of Kent as overlord to Ethelwulf who served as his client king there as well as over Essex, Sussex, and Surrey, following Baldred's departure. 
Egbert proceeded to extend his territory, at Mercia's cost, during 825 to 829 CE. He invaded North Wales in 828 CE and accepted the Kingdom of Northumbria's surrender in 829 CE, while also driving Wiglaf from his throne and taking direct control of Mercia. He was the most powerful monarch in the kingdom by c. 830 CE, and Wessex controlled resources and trade from the south to the north of Britain. Although Egbert retained control of the north, he lost control of Mercia in 830 CE when Wiglaf returned from exile and reclaimed the crown. Many explanations have been proposed for the reason of Mercia's rebirth, but the most likely is the Carolingian Empire's lack of support for Wessex. The Frankish kingdom was saved during Charlemagne's reign, but when he died in 814 CE, he was replaced by his son Louis the Pious, or 814-840 CE, who struggled to manage his vast domain. In 820 CE, shortly after his death, the first Viking attack occurred in West Francia. The shore guard successfully defeated this attack because the Vikings were caught off guard by the opposition they encountered, nevertheless, they would return later with a larger force and better prepared. Louis the Pious would have been able to help Egbert in Wessex in the 820 CE, but as the decade continued, he was dealing with Slavic incursions, rebellions, and eventually a series of civil conflicts, and therefore had his own difficulties to cope with. Nonetheless, contrary to the assertions of a number of academics, Wessex did not lose power after 830 CE. By 831 CE, Mercia had established itself as an independent state, functioning without regard for Wessex's interests, but it was nothing like as strong as it had been and would never be again. Scholars who argue that Wessex fell in the 830 CE point to Egbert's defeat by the Vikings in 836 CE, however this was a single setback against a previously unknown foe and does not constitute a decline. With a fleet of 35 ships, the Danes attacked Charmouth, modern-day Carhampton, in Somerset, in 836 CE, only to be confronted by Egbert and his army. A vast massacre was made there, and the Danes remained lords of the field, according to the Anglo-Saxon chronicle entry for that year, suggesting a decisive triumph for the Viking raids. The Vikings appear to have formed a pact with the Cornish people of Demnonia, who had been under Wessex's control since Egbert's conquests in c. 815 CE. It's unclear what the Vikings did after the Battle of Charmouth, but they must have stayed in the area since they and the army of Demnonia encountered Egbert and his army at the Battle of Hingston Down in 838 CE. The Viking Demnonia troops appear to have declared war on Wessex and taken up a position in present-day Cornwall, daring Egbert to meet them, according to the Anglo-Saxon chronicles when he, Egbert, heard this, he marched with his army against them and battled with them at Hengston where he put both to flight, the record for 838 CE continues. Although Wessex's dominance over Mercia waned from c. 830 CE, Egbert was still able to raise a troop and win wars as late as 838 CE, a year before his death. His failure in 836 CE, which has been attributed to a lack of finances or assistance from Louis the Pious, might just as well have been due to a lack of planning and surprise. Egbert was likely beaten in 836 CE for the same reason that the Vikings were easily defeated by the West Francia shore guard in 820 CE, he had no clue what to anticipate from his opponents. The Vikings did not fight in the same way that the West Franks or West Saxons did, and Egbert realized this after Charmouth and was better prepared for them in 838 CE.